the universe is trying to tell you, like, try this out. It's going to be good for your brand. It's going to be that one thing that takes you to the next level. The real secret sauce is honestly sometimes just going to the platforms and looking at content. Utilizing influencer with paid media. I think that is truly an, an unbelievable combination in order to reach any of your marketing goals. They're experts in, in content creation. They know what works for their followers. They know what works on social. Good morning, everybody, and welcome on Inside. Yeah, another webinar, Seven Reasons You Need to Double Down on influencer marketing in 2023. If you joined us on our last webinar, all about the ways to crush it on TikTok, welcome back. But we're so excited to have you all uh, on the morning here on the West Coast. Uh, good afternoon if you're on the East Coast, but I'm so excited to dig in to this very important topic. You know, we've seen so much inbound requests from major brands across the spectrum that really want to get more involved in the influencer and creator space. So we're gonna walk you through these seven reasons. Also keep in mind, we have the Q&A chat box uh, within this Zoom webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to drop that in as well. And we'll be joined later on in our panel discussion by Joey Kinsley at Sir Yacht. He boasts over a half a million followers across platform. You may know him on TikTok. He's crushing on that platform. So we're gonna talk to the influencer, to the creator, to show you brands how you, should, you can show up and what you can learn from somebody that's doing this stuff each and every day. So before we jump into the top seven, I wanna bring on a couple amazing guests. So she's the Senior Director of Media at SCN Digital, overseeing analytics, paid media, and influencers, has overseen over, I mean, hundreds, Liz, hundreds of millions of dollars in ad campaigns throughout her career. And here at STN, Liz Nidavaji joins us this morning. And also Brandon Goodrow, he's our Senior Influencer Marketing Manager, oversees all the Fortune 500 brand influencer campaigns and really working with these influencers and creators every single day. So no better than to have these two experts on this discussion today. Brandon, I know uh, you and I are a little tired after, uh, I don't know, a few heart attacks last night after that Lakers-Minnesota play-in, but hopefully you got your coffee in you, man. Absolutely, and it was all worth it. Yeah, here we go. So let's dive right in, um, and we're gonna get into the first of these seven reasons as we try to provide as much value as we can here on the influencer webinar. All right, so number one, Brandon, I'll start with you. Influencer content overperforms branded content. This may seem a little bit obvious to some people like us that work in the social media space, but no longer is the linear looking ad spots uh, working, especially on social media, simply because it's not genuine or authentic to those platforms. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think as we've said here, you can see the stat, you know, 90% of consumers actually say that this user generated content is much more impactful when they're making buying decisions than other forms of promotional content. Um, and it's really why, you know, these people are following these influencers for some reason, they relate to them, they think the content they have is engaging, whatever that is. Um, but the content coming from these influencers just feels more organic in their feed, um, as long, especially when it's within that influencer's, you know, typical unique style. It's got the same feel to what these people are used to seeing. So when you're able to insert a brand into that in a really natural way, it's just going to drive further engagement, further interest in what you're trying to get across with your brand messaging um, and really have much more of an impact for you than your traditional kind of social media ad. And, and TikTok didn't start this, but I would say they, they accelerated the face forward content that's just working on social media, right? We see it with TikTok and Reels and YouTube shorts, but you know, humans want to interact with humans much less than brands. And there's something psychologically about that, right? Where, you know, you trust your friend when they say, go check out this movie. You trust your friend's friend when they say, watch the latest season of Succession, but you may not trust the brand. Do they have a hidden message here? Are they trying to get me? So I think it's such a great way to come across authentic to your audience when you're trying to hit that key demo. All right. So number two, influencer marketing really unlocks game changing insights. And I think Liz, this is what marketers are getting hooked on. You know, if you have the $350,000 billboard on Sunset Boulevard in LA or maybe Times Square, you know, you get a little bit of data, but you can't really prove it. And I think once marketers get a sense of the, the day to day data that you can extract from these type of campaigns, it gets pretty addicting. Yes, David, that's a great point. I think one thing here I'd love to talk about is the amount of actionable metrics that you can take from influencer campaigns. This is going beyond traditional vanity metrics that we may assume comes with influencer marketing. So a few of these that I've seen throughout my career, um, obviously we can track CPA and purchases and really actually measure ROAS when it comes to utilizing influencers. And then when it comes to looking at how people respond to your brand, looking at brand sentiment, which is such an important part of any marketing campaign, we're able to really track that through their to, through their proprietary metrics, such as share and share or share and save data. And so that market, that value is just so 
amazing when it comes to your day-to-day -day, you know, needs and also looking at your campaign needs and overall marketing needs. I think what's great too is when you're trying to hit a, a maybe a new demographic, a lot of our brands list say we want to get younger, Gen Z. We may want to reach a Latinx demographic that we don't really have with our own and operated channels. And what's so great about this is when you're trying out select influencers, maybe you try 10. And as, after you look at the data, you realize, wow, these three really resonated and were really able to come up across authentically. And then you could double down on those three after you kind of like, you know, A, B tested the full 10. That's what's so important here, right? Where you can really see who's working, who's not working for you, and then double down on the ones that are working. Yep, exactly right. And I think here's a good example of, of able to get a comprehensive report. And so you can see the breakdown of the campaign here, but each indiv individual influencer will have their own stats and being able to look at those together and see who's really resonating with your brand is really, really important. And also that data for future campaigns is also, again, extremely valuable. And trust us, any influencer or creator worth their salt is digging into this data almost daily, figuring out what's working, what's not working. So they are really... If they're at that, you know, 500,000 plus, like we'll talk with Joey in a little bit, trust me, they are little scientists, if you will, when it comes to algorithm hacking and what's working. So that's why it's so great. We'll get into more topics of why you should trust influencers as that creative director. All right. So number three, Brandon, you know, long-term collaborations are really the key to winning audiences, trust, authenticity, and credibility. You know, when I look back at my childhood being obsessed with Michael Jordan, he was wearing Nikes, he was, you know, pushing Gatorade and pushing Wheaties, but those were long-term partnerships. It's not as if they paid Michael Jordan $1 million to wear Nikes over one game. It was over time that it seemed like it was so much more authentic. And the same could be said if you're working with the same influencers that resonate with your key demo. Definitely. I mean, I, I think working with any influencer in any capacity, um, you know, you're going to be able to do something that's impactful for your brand. You know, those one-off activations definitely do have value. Um, but one of the trends that's becoming more and more noticeable, and it's something that's gone on for a long time, like you mentioned, with some of you know, even going back into you know some of the traditional advertising space, uh, where the, are those longer-term influencer collaborations? Um, and so that can include you know those big paid ambassadors that you've got your you know, your Michael Jordans, your um, yeah. you know Kardashians, like those kind of folks with big names. Um, but it can also include people that are, have those smaller followings that are just in the you know micro or nano influencer space, even really. Um, and really, and those people, you can just do stuff as simple as seeding them product on a regular basis. Uh, you know, we see a lot of brands on social right now that, you know, they have a, a roster of people that they work with. Anytime they release something new, that yeah. roster gets fed that product. They're constantly talking about it. Um, and really having those influencers, having that consistency with them where they're talking about your product, they're talking about your brand. It really only builds further credibility with their audiences. It's going to further validate you know, the brand messaging that they're putting out uh, because it's going to feel more organic. It's going to feel like something, hey, this person didn't just use this one time because someone paid them to do it. They're using it all the time because it's something that really has value to them in their life. Maybe I should check that out myself. Um, so really by showing that, you know, it's really going to make that partnership feel more organic. It's going to, uh, it's going to go a lot further in validating the messaging you're trying to get across with their audience. And, and we see a lot of brands have so much success, you know, on my podcast, I, I met with the folks at way, uh, hair care, and they have a, a 50 ambassadors that every single time they come out with a new product, a new shampoo, a new conditioner, they're seeding that product out about a month early and just for free, just like check it out, post about it. No, uh, no obligations here. And man, did those 50 people just go crazy when they get that box from way, uh, you know, every so often. And it really creates a community and kind of that trustworthiness that you talked about. I want to quickly go back to number two, uh, Liz. We had a question here in the chat. Uh, do you pull those metrics from Facebook Ads Manager? Can you can you speak a little bit to how you're getting this data from select influencers during these campaigns? Absolutely. We actually don't get those metrics from uh, Facebook Ads Manager. We actually compile those individually. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we will take each individual influencer's data that they send us. This can be via screenshot or however the data will parse and essentially just put this into a um, our own dashboard. So um, it's really important. One note I do want to make is that influencers do share their proprietary metrics with us. So it's important yeah. not to put that into like a chat GPT because you want to be really sensitive when it comes to certain information that influencers will share. But essentially, this is just a compiled dashboard that you can put together. Um, I will note that you can get certain data from Facebook Ads Manager, but it would have to be a sponsored content post. Love that. Thanks for that uh, That intel there, Liz. Yeah. We have, a, we have another question from Aaron in the chat. And essentially, you know, what she's saying here is she works in medical diagnostics. Uh, does influencers really work for that space um, it, as it feels different for her? And what I'll say here, I can take this one, is every single brand, you're, what, what you're really doing is who is your target consumer? 
Who is the person that's gonna buy your product, sign up for your subscription, you know, visit you at your retail location? And if those folks live on, uh, live on LinkedIn, if they're on Instagram, if they're in Reddit forums, wherever there may be, there usually is an influencer or creator play. All it's about is about how can I get in front of my audience more and what influencers are currently in front of those audiences so I can make sure to do that. So I really believe, uh, Brandon, and I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but I think every single brand that has a consumer or a customer, maybe it's not TikTok, but there's somewhere where there are customers are hanging out that you can use influencers to your advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, um, you know, sometimes people get caught up with the influencer side, not necessarily being as relatable to tr the traditional media space. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of influencers who are in that, like even in like the thought leadership category, where when they're talking about stuff, because of who they are and the status that they've built, they're maybe doing interviews with people on their social channels, they're doing Instagram lives, or they're doing, you know, these kind of like podcasts or stuff like that, that's posting across social media. Um, there's still a ton of value in that, whatever it is, whatever your goal is, there is an influencer out there who can help you achieve it. And again, my what 65 year old mother is just scrolling Instagram daily. So don't don't get it twisted. This isn't just a young person's game. All consumers are across these platforms. All right, so let's go to number four. Your competitors are getting real results with creators and influencers. This is why we say you got to double down. You know, our inboxes have been flooded in Q1 of 2023 with brands wanting to try more paid media, try more influencer and creator work. And you see the, I mean, billions of dollars in budgets, even as you, you know, quote unquote, call it a recession or the market or the economy, interest rates, all those things. You know, actually what we're seeing is people are maybe taking money away from traditional uh, Liz and, and really trying it here on the digital space because you could track those results and you can pull levers on a daily basis. Exactly. I love that you mentioned pulling lever levers on a daily basis, because obviously that is something that we see with paid media optimizations all the time, but it can actually be applied to your influencer campaigns and kind of going back to what Brandon was speaking about. When you have these long-term campaigns, you're able to pull those levers, you know, throughout the year and essentially optimize your campaign performance. So depending on your goal here, you know, you could say that this influencer is driving this much more purchases, continue to use that influencer, right? If it's working, it's working. I always say, continue yeah. to optimize with what works and stop with what doesn't. And here you can see, obviously the spend is increasing because their marketers are getting results. There's no question about that. And I think a great secret sauce here is, in, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit, but utilizing influencer with paid media. I think that is truly an an unbelievable combination in order to reach any of your marketing goals. Love it. All right, number five, Brandon, this is what we'll probably get deeper into with uh, Joey in, in our panel session, but treat influencers as creative directors. Nobody knows the audience, especially if you're going to an influencer to uh, really use their audience or for that distribution. Nobody knows their audience better. And I think so many brands get this wrong where they go to a very creative influencer like a, a Sir Yacht, like Joey that we'll talk to here soon. And they say, just post this ad or post this linear looking commercial, which totally defeats the purpose of what you're trying to do here. Totally agree. I um, mean, you know, I think one of the words we've said a lot today is organic. Uh, and, and it's something in the influencer space that's just so important. Um, influencer content that's going to perform the best is the content that feels organic to their followers. The people that are following them, they're following them because they like the content they're putting out. There's something about it um, that really is attractive to them. So those people uh, that are the influencers, they're experts in, in content creation. They know what works for their followers. They know what works on social. As you kind of mentioned earlier, David, they know the hacks with the algorithm. They know all those things. Yeah. Um, so it really allows them to kind of build and foster a relationship with their audience. Uh, so obviously we're working with them because they have a following, right? We want to use their audience to kind of push our, our brand messaging out, talk about our products. Um, but really the value of their creativity is worth so much more than that. Uh, these people, like I said, they are creative directors. They are the experts in, in the content creation in space and on the platforms that they're working on. Um, so while the brand messaging is important to pull through, and that's definitely something that we always work through in any kind of briefing process with these influencers, it is really important to give them the creative liberty to go out and create content that's going to be most engaging for their followers. It's going to feel organic in their feed. When someone comes across it and they're scrolling through, they're not just going to immediately say, oh, that's an ad and move past. They're going to say, hey, yeah. well, this is this person that I follow that I love. What are they talking about today? Um, and that's really going to have such a bigger impact for you. Um, and ultimately, it also then you can leverage that content on your own channel sometimes, and you can use it in your own, you know, whether that's in your own organic posts, or even sometimes through paid posts, where now the messaging that's coming from your brand is a little bit more humanized. And it's not just the typical branded content people are used to seeing. Yeah, you hit a really amazing point there. I think really that self-awareness of, hey, we want to get younger, we want to be in front of Gen Z, but our content isn't resonating. We don't have enough Gen Z people following our own and operated. So you're going out 
to influencers and creators to really touch that audience. And then you're saying, post this. Well, if you're being self-aware and if you're being humble enough, you don't really know how to uh, interact with that audience or engage that audience and the influencer does. So that's so important. And then Liz, I'll, I'll touch what Brandon said there for a second. You know, I think a lot of people look at this as a transactional relationship. I'm gonna pay you money because I wanna get in front of your audience for distribution. And I think what brands forget here is there may be a lot of situations where don't even use the influencer's audience, but hire the influencer as a creative director to create content that resonates with your key demo that can live on your own and operate it or use them for their audience. But three months later, you can post that content on your own Instagram feeds. Yes. Again, so many benefits to utilizing influencers in so many different areas of your marketing and especially in your content planning. As Brandon said, I think trust is super important. That is a word you'll hear us talk a lot about today because truly, truly influencers are trust marketing. They are people that we are looking up to for purchase decisions, not brands anymore. So I think having them yeah. as a as a spokesperson and an ambassador just makes sense. And I've talked a lot about this uh, throughout the, the last two webinars, the podcast, everything like that. Again, especially on a TikTok in a real environment, YouTube shorts, you're scrolling and the, the logos aren't that big. You don't know if it's coming from this influencer or a brand. So no longer, I think, are our social users really resonating with who's posting, but more so, you know, that discoverability of what's engaging me. Oh, by the way, that was from Coca-Cola or oh, by the way. That was from Warner Brothers or whatever it may be. All right, getting into number six, social users are savvy. They're smart. They grew up with this. You know, I'm a little bit older, I guess, 36. Uh, I had Facebook and MySpace in high school, but you're talking about a Gen Z audience that ever since they could be able to talk, they had a cell phone in their hands. They were on social media. They know what ads are. They know when you're trying to, you know, um, bait and switch them or, you know, really try to ask for that call to action. So I think it's so important. I mean, you know, Liz, I think we all know that social users are scrolling really quickly in the first second or two if they know it's an ad. Exactly. I actually wanted to share a really great stat I read. It's 96% of people hate ads. And that was by Inc. Magazine. I think that just pretty much sums up how we all feel. And so I think gone are the days of boring advertisement, right? You know, yeah. I think we traditionally saw having brands right in your face, like you were just speaking about the logos right there. And while that is important in some aspect, People don't like that anymore. People are not going to, again, trust or resonate with your brand. Yeah. This is a beautiful example of an influencer. She looks great. She looks like she's relatable. Yeah, she's holding a product, but it's not right in your face. And I think that's what really is authentic and, or and, and organic and needed when it comes to influencer marketing. So um, just again, we'll use these words a ton, but humanizing your brand and really bringing out that organic feel is just so important. Yeah, and once again, stay tuned. We're going to do a panel session right after these seven topics uh, with an influencer has over half a million followers that can really tell us some ways that you can make sure your brand doesn't show up like a boring ad, like Liz said, and more as an organic, engaging piece of content. All right, uh, Brandon, bring us home here. Number seven, um, hopefully you're not like the Lakers and inbound this or fumble this ball, but here we go. Don't let budget hold you back from working with influencers. You know, I think... Oftentimes, brands think they need hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars just to tip their toe in this space. We talked earlier in this uh, presentation about the idea to seed product or the idea to have some select ambassadors. And you'd be amazed, and we've seen this too with our clients, Brandon, how likely even micro-influencers, 1,000 to 10,000 followers, will post for free if you give them a hoodie. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think for a lot of brands that haven't done influencer work in the past, the cost of it seems so prohibitive. You know, you're used to seeing these big names when people are so that they associate with influencers. Um, so you think, oh my God, I got to pay that person six figures. And what am I yeah. really going to get out of that? Yeah. Uh, but there are so many different types of influencers out there that you can work with that, you know, cost shouldn't be the, the reason that, that you don't do it. Um, you know, like we've said, there's micro and nano influencers out there. Those people have some of the most engaged audiences on social. Uh, the barrier to entry in terms of cost is so much lower to work with them. You know, as you just mentioned, David, sometimes it's as simple as just seeding them product. Uh, yeah. If it's something that's really that they have some kind of natural tie to, they're going to get excited about. Sometimes you don't even need to pay them just getting product in their hands um, and maybe not having any set deliverables, but getting product in their hands and they're able to insert it in some kind of natural way into their life. Uh, you know, you get that content that comes out um, and you still get that added reach. Um, and because they have that higher engagement, you know, their, their, uh, their audience might be small, but it's mighty. Um, you know, you're going to get a lot out of it. And I, I, you know, 
and whether it's free tickets, free apparel, free access, uh, you know, free months of subscriptions, whatever it may be, I think if you really sit there with your marketing team or your team overall, even if you're a smaller brand or you know a CPG brand, what could we give away? You know, we don't have a huge amount of money, and I think Liz, this goes back to what you were talking about earlier. If you don't have a ton of marketing budget and you want to say, hey, listen, we're going to seed some product out, isn't that a great place to see again what creators are resonating? Um, that we can, when we do have larger budget, we know exactly who we're going to go to because we just did this A-B test with product only and we saw a lot of great results. Yes, again, making it not so super transactional so that the yeah. influencer is fully posting what their thoughts are. And I think that obviously, as you mentioned before, we saw this with TikTok really start this wave and now it's completely taken over, I think, most channels that we see and use every day. So I think budget is something that, you know, may have been, again, as Brandon mentioned, a barrier of entry and kind of a little, oh, I'm not sure if we have enough to pay someone $500,000. And, you know, now that we have this data that we've seen, those aren't the most effective uh, campaigns usually. So it's been it's been really interesting to see it all kind of play out. So there yeah. you have it. You know, go ahead, so Brandon. Yeah, and I, I think one other kind of benefit of working with influencers, we've talked about it before, especially when you don't have those budgets is, you know, how do we make this the most efficient spend as possible? What can we, how do we maximize our return here is again, if you really view these people as that kind of creative director, really what you're getting from them is you're getting an influencer post, you're getting it on their channel with new audiences, but you're also able to get the content creation arm where yeah. you're, you know, this is essentially like a production for you. You know, you have that extra, extra content that's banked. Um, that is, you know, from these people who are experts, they know what performs well um, across platforms. It's different than the usual content you're putting out. Um, and ultimately it's something that, uh, like you said, David, it's something that you can you can target towards audiences. You know, if you want to get in front of a Gen Z audience, let's find Gen Z content creators who, yes, maybe they have smaller followings, but now that we have a bank of content from them, they know what's going to appeal to that kind of audience. Absolutely. I think oftentimes we always forget about the ability to use these folks as content creators for your own and operated, not just the transactional nature of using the distribution of their current audience. All right, so there you have it. Those are seven reasons we feel like you need to double down again. This has been a hot and heavy topic around STN, we've seen the market. I think because again, the market's a little crazy right now, um, I think a lot of folks are are trying some new things. So I wanna transition to the uh, panel part of our webinar, and I wanna bring on someone that knows the influencer game probably better than all of us in terms of actually day-to-day -day creating content, and he's Joey Kinsley, at Sir Yacht. He made a huge splash on TikTok. I'm sure you are familiar with him with his funny videos covering sports, music video parodies, Ohio stereotypes, that and much, much more. We've worked with Joey on a, uh, quite a bit of campaigns over the years, so I wanted to bring him on. Joey, thanks for the time, man. I'm going to need you to hype me up at a bunch of other events. <laughs> got you. That was an incredible intro. Thank I you very you, much. Man. Happy to be here. Let's, uh, let's dig into it. So oftentimes, I think a lot of us marketers talk about the importance of influencer marketing and working with creators, but not very often do we talk directly to the person that's in that day-to-day -day grind and understands the audience so well. So I'll start off with maybe an easy one, but... What do most brands get wrong, Joey, when it comes to working with influencers? Yeah, that's a good question. I think what most brands kind of get wrong is that we, we kind of touched on this, that um, you won't be able to afford them. They're, you know, like the Kardashians, they're like Logan Paul, they're already established or that just the, the marketing in general doesn't work. Um, I think that a lot of people think that traditional media, that although is a, a form of getting your point across is um, potentially an outdated uh, form to get your point across. Uh, and, and a lot of people I'm, that I'm working with, um, working with some brands, um, they're really trying to play catch up because like we said, competitors have already, you know, gotten an edge. They're already working with influencers. They're already, they already have this market. So um, I'm not going to say the name of who we're working with right now, but what their concern is, is that they're going to miss out on this demographic of 18 to 24 year olds or people in high school or people even in their um you know late 20s and i guess another thing like we've also said uh, we're touching on a lot of great things here in this webinar is that uh influencer marketing only works for this 18 to 24 year old right. as you know my parents are on social media you know people that are younger people that are older um it really uh i think it just touches every demographic possible um and as brandon said previously um you know, with influence influencer marketing excuse me you can really touch on pretty much any audience you want my, my father is a uh, he's a dentist and uh there's an ins insane amount of dent dental content like there's actually like a a gap in it because every time somebody makes a video on on, on dental content it does really well so it, it, you'd be surprised it. on what kind of content there is i was watching pool cleaners this morning 
Yeah, like that shows up on my TikTok. TikTok. I don't know why that shows up on my TikTok uh, for you. It's so too. a it's, lot of pool clean. It just it's fascinating. You want you like this is a dirty pool. You're like I gotta watch. I gotta see the pool get <laughs> clean. So it's amazing. Like literally anything can be. Uh, you can work with any type of influencer. It's 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 fascinating. Joey, we were talking earlier, and you mentioned in 2020 you saw skepticism about is influencer marketing just like this sexy term that brands throw around like the metaverse or NFTs. Um, and, and you're kind of, I guess, sensing a little bit of the same as I, uh, you probably feel this too, but I think marketers, A, they're growing up. So some of the folks like us that have grew up on this are becoming the CMOs and decision makers. But B, I do think with kind of a weird economy right now, brands are dipping their toe in, but you also have noticed a little bit of skepticism on, I guess, the value of, of creators and influencers. Definitely. I think people are, uh, I, I think deep, just because people are kind of used to a certain way, there's, they're used to going about marketing and, and getting their their brand out and getting their their products and services out a certain way yeah. that they have every right to necessarily feel skeptical but i definitely believe you know from my end of things and i've seen it with with brands that i've worked with that you know you can get results and uh, it's, it's a great way of really tapping into somebody else's audience that you don't i mean necessarily you don't have and it i think costs a lot more to try to or you have to get a little more creative if you're this brand to try to tap into this audience over here, or yeah. you can just work with this influencer who has that brand in place or who has that audience in place already. Uh, so we've, I've seen that a lot um, in instances with, with myself. And I want to really, it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, one thing I wanted to jump into something you said, I think it's something we've talked a lot about is testing, right? So being able to really test the waters and having brands kind of decide where their media dollars are going. And like you said, of course, there's going to be skepticism, but I think in just general, looking at the types of influencers you could test, you know, nano um, to macro and to these niche topics, like you talked about, there are so many niche influencers that are so relatable to certain audiences like the pool cleaning. And I think if you want to test and create these kind of like siloed A-B tests, I think that there's just so much opportunity with influencers. Um, and I would love to hear anyone else's kind of opinion on that, because I just think that there's so much to to test even when it comes to your campaign objectives, right? Like, so if you're a brand looking to, you know, drive purchases, influencers can help with that. And I think that's not always top of mind for brands. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 oh, go ahead, Brandon, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, just to kind of build off what you were saying there, Liz, I mean, I think definitely back to like the, the testing element is, you know, if we dial back to what we were just saying about like cost, I think people, sometimes you don't really know what your, who your target should be. Sometimes you need to cast a wide net and then dial it in from there. And because you have these, these people that have these highly engaged audiences, you're able to do really, really uh, compelling testing with them um, at low cost to see what works, what kind of content works well, what kind of audiences does that content appeal to. And then that can inform your own strategy for other marketing efforts, as well as expanded influencer outreach. Yeah. And um, I, I guess to, to start off, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I, I built my audience over the past four or five years. Um, but starting out, it's, I mean, even a little bit now, uh, a lot of my content has to do with the state of Ohio. Um, so I got to, like we said before, a lot of influencers will do some work if you just give them some apparel, some merch, whatever it may be. So I worked with a company called Drink Ohio and uh, I, they gave me a really cool t-shirt and gave me some bottle openers and things like that. And I just kind of organically use it in content. Um, kind of worked my way up with uh, a couple other mid Midwest uh, based creative or Midwest based companies. Um, we have a partnership with the Ohio Lottery. So a lot of times like people kind of look at bigger creators as like, oh, we're going to get more exposure. Whereas you can work with these micro nano, even like just super niche influencers that are like based in one area or have like one category. And although they maybe have like 10,000 followers, um, their following, like we've said, is, is very, very impactful. Like the fight, for example, the financial industry on YouTube is really amazing because a lot of these guys, you know, they only have like 10,000 followers, but then they sell courses and they make yeah. a lot of money off of that. Or their audience is super intact. Like they have those 10,000 followers, but the percentage of people that are engaging and watching is like much higher than a typical audience. So niche things uh, can be uh, seen as like a, a negative, but honestly, I, I, it's, I think things are really um, projecting in 2023 and going forward is, you know, the more niche you go, the more tapped into an audience you can, you can be. And then Joe, I know it depends on platform, especially the difference from like TikTok and Instagram, but what are some metrics that you're looking at? Like, all right, I want to make sure, I think I would assume creators influencers, they want to make sure they don't get deemed as a sellout and, or you're clearly just trying to hawk this product and use us as your audience to make some money. So I guess from a creative standpoint, but also an analytical standpoint, 
What are you looking at when you want to make sure A, it resonates and comes off across organic, organic, and then B, what numbers are you looking at to ensure that happened? Yeah, that's a good question. I think for um, I, it's really exciting for for me and and where I am in my stage. Um, you know, we're able to my agent and I are, are able to focus on brands that not necessarily we're looking at to kind of, you know, drive revenue and, and push it to other things so we can create content, but also brands that we can just work with organically and yeah. just have really good results with. So, which in turn obviously helps the brand as well, because like we've kind of said, you, know, you can pump money into a influencer that has nothing to do with your audience or, or tell them basically like, here, here's what we're going to do. You're not going to have any creative control. And then you're yeah. kind of just like, you know, you're kind of stuck in that situation. Yeah. Um, so I look for brands that are really open to giving the influencer creative control and just building that trust that, you know, you're going to, I I have this audience that you are looking, looking for. And if you just let me have the creative control, we're going to have a beautiful partnership. And that, we'll that, you know, intimately, them. by the way, which is an important part of this. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. And then in terms of, um, in terms of, the analytics and numbers that I'm looking at that to see that it's doing well. The biggest thing on short form content, at least right now is watch time. And mm -hmm. the more people are watching the video, whereas you're like, you're hooking them in and yeah. it's not like an ad, like the moment I see an ad on my feed, it's, it's just, you know, they call it swipe up content. You just <laughs> swipe up, you're done. You're on the next one. Yeah. And, uh, but if you can get people in and make it look like it's not an ad, have it be super organic. Start, start with that. Dirty, start yeah, with that exactly. dirty pool with the leaves inside. <laughs> you got me. Yeah, no, and that's the biggest thing. And, and it's it's really, I mean, you want to build a partnership that's a win-win for both sides. And, um, you know, I've been fortunate to work with some brands that are really into that. And, you know, it, it, like I said, win-win for everybody. Uh, Brandon, there's a question in the chat here uh, from Nikki. How do I determine which social media platforms are best suited for influencer marketing based on the business? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely, it comes down to kind of, you know, establishing what your goals are. What, what do you want to accomplish with influencers? Who do you want to reach? How old are they? Uh, you know, where are they? And then we can kind of go from there and, uh, you know, develop strategies that are based on, you know, who are on these platforms, which platforms are going to perform better based on those target demographics. Obviously, you know, across platforms, as we've kind of mentioned, you can find, you know, everybody's kind of on everything these days. Um, but obviously some of them, you know, TikTok, for example, if you're looking for a younger audience, TikTok is definitely going to skew younger than say going on Facebook. Um, so it's really just determining, really dialing in who do you want to target? Um, and then what you're looking for, um, you know, obviously, you know, video content is kind of king right now. So, you know, it, when you're reaching those younger audiences, they want to see something that's a video. They don't want to see a static image. So making sure you're doing stuff like TikTok or Instagram reels, um, or even like, you know, YouTube shorts is starting to get a little bit bigger um, because people love that, that type of content. Um, so yeah, really the audience and the type of content you're looking for, um, what, what are you trying to accomplish with that? Um, and then, you know, really using what we know about each of these platforms to inform your strategy from there. Yeah, absolutely. And just to touch on that, Brandon, as well, once you kind of figure that out and align on what platforms you're going to use, you're always going to want to, you know, adhere to their best practices so that, you know, your content, you know, favors their algorithm. So for example, YouTube's algorithm, definitely different than an Instagram algorithm. So you want to make sure that the content um, that you're aligning with is also going to be um, seen by the by both audiences, right? So depending on what your distribution strategy is, whether that is taking the content and posting it on your Instagram or having them share or both, um, really that the, those best practices align with each of the platforms. Brandon, I wanted to ask this question to you because I know you do it every day for us, but blank canvas, a brand says, hey, we really want to grow into a new demo. We want to get younger Gen Z. And you're like, all right, and this is how you found Joey, right? Like I got to find the right target demo. Can you walk the audience through I guess what your process is to start to find uh, influencers and creators that really work well for the brand and, and how you go about that. Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I think it starts, um, number one, we have tools that we, that we leverage um, with some of the platforms um, that can kind of do some of these search features for us, right? So those platforms allow us to get really targeted. Again, we focus, it starts with the brand and what their goal is. Um, and then we build out from there. So, you know, brand wants to reach, um, you know, someone who's 18 to 24, they want to reach people who are interested in, you know, I'll use this because I'm interested in it. And we're talking to, we've talked about earlier, basketball. Yeah. Um, you know, I can go to these platforms and I can search, um, you know, I can target people that are even themselves in that age range. I can look at their audience numbers um, and see, you know, what percentage of their audience I want to be in that range. And then search things like 
basketball or hoops or, you know, things around that um, and really get focused in. And it will kind of spit out a, a lot of different influencers for me. It'll give me background metrics on them. What is their engagement rate? Um, it'll talk to, it'll tell me some things about some of their other branded content and how that has performed. Um, it'll even give me things like, you know, where their audience is, um, you know, things like that. Uh, best times of day for recent posts that they've had. Yeah. Uh, so really starting there. Um, but also, you know, the, the, the real secret sauce is honestly sometimes just going to the platforms and looking at content. Um, you know, when you're searching for content that's like that, all of a sudden those algorithms are going to start to spit out more content that's like that. You're going to start to see more people. Um, so sometimes it's as simple as just like going on to TikTok and searching basketball and then just scrolling for a while and watching videos, see what is compelling um, to you. Um, and then, you know, backtrack from there and look and see, you know, do these people reach the right audience? Because this kind of content seems to do really well. Um, so, you know, I, I would say that's the, the way that we typically go about finding those people. Um, and then obviously the, the usual, you know, background checks, making sure that everybody's, you know, safe and brand friendly, um, you know, looking back at some of their channels for, you know, four, six, 10 months, whatever that looks like. Now, um, just to make sure all their content is, is kind of PC, um, it's going to be something that a brand is going to want to be able to be associated with. And then Joey, for you, from an influencer side, I guess, can you walk us through the right way to approach influencers to start that relationship off on a, on a positive note, whether it's a DM or email, I'm sure you've seen some outreach where you're just like, Ugh, like I don't want to be, I'm already turned off, I guess. And I don't think this is going to work for me or my audience. And you've probably seen it done the right way where it really excites you and wants you to learn more. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I've seen a bunch of, um, I think the, the ones that at first that I, I am really uh, just, I, I don't really want to work with are ones that just seem like spam that don't really have a personalized message or anything like yeah. that. It just makes me feel like, oh, I'm just like, I'm just basically uh, filling up the quota for them. It, whether it is or not, you know, it it remains to be seen. But the brands that I'm super, you know, interested in working with are ones that, you know, reach out, have done some research on my content, think that it would be a perfect fit with what they, what they do. And then, you know, it's like, oh, that's kind of exciting. They know a little bit about me. It seems like it would resonate with my audience. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's go talk about some things. So I think it's just as simple as like doing the research on on brand, on, on influencers that you think would resonate with, uh, that would resonate with your brand and that you could tap into their audience with. I love that. Uh, we have a question in the chat here. What are some common mistakes that businesses make when implementing influencer marketing? How can I avoid them? I'm, you know, a lot of that seven that we went over, Liz, was there, but I guess when you hear that question, what's the first thing that comes to mind as far as the biggest mistake you've seen? The biggest mistake that I've seen is not giving influencers creative, full creative control over that, their content. Yeah. And Let's I know say that, that we need to say that three or four more times. Yeah. Huh? That's a big deal. And, and I know that might be scary to some people, but we do have this brand. Basically what we do is we create a content brief that is saying you cannot use these terms. So we are being brand safe and we do make sure that influencers don't go, you know, super out of line. So I think that is the number one worry from brands is, is oh, what if they're, you know, it's super out of the, you know, out there. Uh, we make sure that that doesn't happen. And, and you can absolutely do that while also giving influencers, you know, their free reign to create what they know, what works best. They are the production houses. So I think that is the number one thing because when we give influencers full creative control, that is when the best organic content happens. Joey, can you speak to maybe your most successful brand partnership, what that looked like? I'm, I'm sure it led, it, you know, led more towards what Liz is saying, where you were able to have some real fun and it just happened to kind of go viral with your audience. Yeah, I think, I mean, right now I'm kind of in the middle of it with the uh, Ohio lottery. Um, I have a huge audience in Ohio and in the Midwest, mm -hmm. so it kind of just makes sense. Um, but what we kind of get to do, what I get to do is I have a bunch of creative control the other day. We went down to Nationwide Arena where the Columbus Blue Jackets played, and I tried breaking the world record for most seats sat in one hour. <laughs> and uh, actually, I'm putting the video together later today. So basically, what what the template is for each video that we do is I create some like challenge video that I'm doing, and then I, I in integrate the Ohio Lottery in there. And I'm not even telling people to go necessarily use right. the Ohio Lottery. I'm just telling them to be responsible and keep it fun. And we have like a key tip. So for example, that one would be know your limits. So I say our key tip is know your limits. Uh, if I would have known my limits, I would have sat in one seat, not 1,187 seats in one hour. And then what, it's was like- that, Was that the, the record video. by the way, or we, we don't know yet? <laughs> so there's secret. a record for 60 seconds and for a stadium, nobody I think has ever attempted it for an hour. So I'm just gonna say I had the record. <laughs> So. so Guinness Guinness Book of World Records have to be there to uh Yeah, they have to be there. So next time, <laughs> maybe I'll do it next time, but I can barely stand and sit down right now. It was just two days oh. ago. So aside from the point, I think again, like the common theme here is if we yeah. keep it as organic as possible, I've had a really great partnership with the Ohio Lottery and they they let me have the creative control and it's uh it's it's been a, it's been fun both ways. 
And then Joey, have you ever had a brand approach you and say, hey, can you make five to seven pieces of organic content that can live more on our feeds? Or have you, has 100% of your brand partnerships been kind of, you know, distribution for your audience? Um, and how do you think brands should, should approach that? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I would say probably 90% of them have been just through my distribution, but yeah. I have had those partnerships um, where they, they reach out and just want me to make a video and it lives on, on their feed. And, and, yeah. and like you said, I think that is, I think that's a great way to um, work with uh, another way to work with an influencer. It ultimately just kind of depends on your strategy and what you think is best. I think there's, there's um, a world where there's a good mix of both yeah. Go back, going back to the Ohio lottery, most of what I do with them is uh you know living on my feed but then they also have things for responsible gambling awareness month which was in march that i made some stuff on their feed um that kind of made more sense to go with, with them as opposed to my channel so ultimately just depends on what your goal is um and and what you think would be best on your platform versus mine but um yeah i i've, I've seen that it works best with a good mix of both i love it um, i know we only have a couple more minutes but i want to get one more question here at least uh, we have a question and brandon you probably can answer this one what does a creative brief template look like i know it's probably the, the simpler, the better uh, one sheet. But when you're trying, when you when you work with Joey, for instance, here recently, uh, what that kind of uh, brief template look like? Yeah, yeah. So our brief templates, uh, we usually do them in like PowerPoint or Google Slides. But yeah, we try to keep it as as short as possible, very digestible. Um, so you know, it's really just a couple slides, maybe one that's got an overview of like what is the campaign. You know, who is the brand? What are they trying to accomplish? Just to give some background information so the influencer is armed with that when they're starting to get creative and they're thinking through these things. Um, you know, the second thing that's really important is, you know, what is the messaging we want to get across? Is it, you know, be responsible when you're gambling? Is it, you know, whatever those things are, let's get the two to three like main message points that we want to deliver. Um, you know, what are the, any kind of brand tags or hashtags that we're using um, in this content? And then, you know, any watch outs. Some brands, you know, I would imagine the lottery, for example, and or, you know, if you work with in the alcohol space or things like that, you know, there are a lot of, um, you know, restrictions that are out there um, that different brands have legally. So making yeah. sure that the influencer is aware of all of those things. But really, that's kind of it. Um, you know, really the messaging, the background, and then, you know, here's what you should avoid. And then, like we said, you know, really kind of giving the creative freedom from there um, to go out and do stuff. Um, you know, these influencers, obviously, Joey can, has, has already spoken to it, you know, their creativity coming up with things that's going to naturally tie into what they're already doing just with that information. Um, you know, they know the best ways to weave in that messaging and what's going to be natural for them. Um, and then that's ultimately what's going to perform best on their channel. I, uh, those of you that have watched ESPN around the horn, I want to give you guys points when you make these amazing, uh, these amazing points. But that being said, I want to go around the horn one last time, kind of 30 seconds each person. Liz, I'll start with you. Put your consultant hat on. I'm a brand. I'm convinced now, but I need one last little piece of motivation for me as a brand to go ahead and dip my toe in the water and take this more seriously or start my first ever influencer campaign. So I'm going to go with the data portion of kind of what we talked about in that, in those seven points. I think data is the data that you get, again, actionable metrics. You can get those with influencers. They're invaluable to your brand, but also you get a peek into how their audience is responding to your content and utilize yeah. that data for the rest of your marketing career. So I'm going to go with data. Yeah. It's almost like you're paying not only for uh, content, for the distribution, but also a focus group, a free focus group for future campaigns. Brandon, what comes to mind for you as that uh, consultant, that one last uh, pitch to these brands? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think for me, it's it's definitely, uh, you know, how specific and targeted you can get with the people that you're reaching out to. Um, you know, brands are, you know, their marketing efforts are want to be so dialed in um, to specific audiences and things like that. We've already touched on, there's a, really an influencer for everything. Um, there's, there is no yeah. product, brand, service that couldn't use influencer marketing because we can reach Whoever you want to reach, we can reach them using influencers. Um, and with big budgets, with small budgets, whatever it is, we, we can accomplish it because there are so many different types of influencers who are out there. All right, Joey, bring us home from the creator standpoint. I think what's super cool about influencer marketing, just like the, the social media, short form content, whatever it may be in general, is that there's just unlimited potential to how well a video can do. Whereas yeah. maybe if you have like, you know, a billboard up, it's like, oh, like on average, like this city gets this much, much traffic. Whereas if you have a video up, if it does really well and continues to get pushed and continues to get pushed, maybe yeah. you paid this premium for it, but you're getting like, you know, I mean, I've had ads that, you know, I've been fortunate that I've had millions and millions of views and, you know, you know, everybody's happy at that point. I get the exposure and, you know, yeah. they get the exposure as well. So, um, 
just uh it's i think it's it's really cool because there really isn't like too big of a blueprint right now for this and we're going to learn so much about influencer marketing here and uh it, it, it again it's just a great way to tap into an audience that i think is uh, influencers have that might might not um be with the brand at the time so it's just a great way to kind of work and like basically get into another uh audience that you weren't at in before Liz, I know you're all about uh, signs and Virgo moons and Mercury and retrograde. And if you if you found a way, if you're on this webinar right now, or you come across this video at some time uh, in the future past the webinar, there's a reason you came on this is because the universe is trying to tell you, like, try this out. It's going to be good for your brand. It's going to be that one thing that takes you to the next level. Uh, thank you so much to, to Joey, Brandon, Liz, for all your amazing insight. You guys are definitely the experts in your respective spaces and brought so much amazing, absolutely free value for the listeners and also the audience here live on the webinar. So thanks so much for your time. And also for everybody that joined, uh, we will be sending you a full recording of the webinar with the full deck as well. Uh, that way, if you didn't write all the notes and you weren't a perfect student, you'll be able to uh, watch this one back. So Brandon, Liz, Joey, thanks, thanks again. And thanks for all for joining. Have a good rest of your week.